please, I encourage you to sign in at the sign in page by the door. So thank you. Um, I just want to start off before we get to um, any new business. Um, I want to welcome um, Ms. Longley. Ms. Long Mrs. Longley? What should I? Ms. Longley here. Um, she's a new member and tonight's her first meeting. Welcome. We'll get your nameplate sorted out and and uh okay that's official okay okay do i need a cop uh is this for chuck or I guess. well the person who swore you in is also taking minutes so okay um thank you um so at this point the first hearing is 705 so let's get to some of the old new business chuck do you want to talk about a minor project sure um. we have a minor project for uh, 20 willow street and we had a minor project back in January of um, 2014 for a driveway and this was just an extension of that um, project to repair the porch that's also in the back adjacent to the driveway. So Mary Gillis at 20 Willow Street um, wanted to just replace that porch in kind uh, and the only thing she had to do was dig two new footings. Uh, okay. Qualified for a minor project mm -hmm. because it was more than 50 feet from the BBW. And I issued that to her. Her project has been uh, approved and a permit has been issued to okay. the building department. Okay. Um, any other minor projects at this point? No. no. Uh, there's a minor modification. If you okay. want to talk about that, uh, sure. we had a gentleman in last, at the last meeting, uh, 196 Salem Street, and his project, he wanted to do some pavers in the back corner of his house, and he was going to keep this, the pavers in line with the house. Well, he's asked if he could modify that to, from a 8 by 20, 20 wide, 8, 8 wide, 20 mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. to a um, 16 wide and 20 long. So it comes out an additional 8 feet. Yep. And he was hoping that that would be a minor mod. That is still more than 50 feet away from okay. the BBW. Okay. Okay. So. Sounds like it It applies. Okay. I have uh, the application here if you want to review any of it. Well, it's it's pavers, right? So that's really minor. It is pavers, and he's putting in, uh, he's adding about two inches of uh, crushed stone to set the pavers in. Okay. So it's real easy. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds... That sounds fine. Um, any other minor project? The only thing that also could be minor would be a certificate of compliance for 62 Oak Street, um, Map 11, Lot 11, Carboni. OK. Um, why don't we get that taken care of? Sixty-two oak. Um, so I see on the site visit notes um, that uh, Terry and Rebecca went there, and um, I saw the site visit notes for sixty-two Oak Street. Um, it all seemed pretty straightforward according to their plan. The only question I was wondering about um, at Oak Street was um, it says towards the end of the site visit notes that there was an oil sheen just south of the 
first or closest wood bridge to the house. Did, um, was that, do, do you happen to know if that was bacterial sheen or? or no idea. Okay. Was, was it a very rusty stream to your memory? Oh, it was a little bit of blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, um, okay. There's, there's uh, my back, a lot of my background is in the uh, Massachusetts hazardous uh, waste regs and um, a oil sheen on surface water that is genuinely petroleum is a two-hour notification to the DEP. It's a little bit of a fire drill typically for the property owner. Um, but there are times that you can be in a, in a place where, in a river where um, it's a, it's a, reduced um, oxygen depleted environment and you can get some some bacteria active in that in that stream especially if it's a slow flowing stream that um, that fix the iron um, and one of the byproducts I think of that bacterial reaction is something that looks an awful lot like petroleum on surface water so it was slow moving right. um, but I would point out at the end of the driveway And it could be that runoff from the street or the driveway itself could have caused some of that. But I don't know either way. But yeah, that was is it a possible source? Um, one thing that differentiates it is, is a bacterial sheen will be clumpy and act sort of like a, a cooled grease. Rusty, too. Yeah, it'll be rusty. It'll be rusty. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and a genuine petroleum sheen will, will have that wonderful swirl about it, you know, sort of like a Milky Way swirl. Not a rainbow. Well, they're both rainbow in color, but one of them will look like we'll have jagged edges. The bacterial will have jagged edges. Mm. Um, so um, it, se it seemed like if it made the, the site visit um, notes, then it was probably pretty clear. I mean, pretty evident? Pretty evident, pretty yeah, would, prevalent. Yeah. Um, maybe it would warrant. Um, another another, another visit um, um, at this point. Did, did you see anything of evidence? I did not go out to the site. Um, last time I was there, the grass was grown, uh, but he he had finished this almost a year ago and yeah. was delayed. So I wasn't out to see. Um, anything at this site visit because it was satisfactory um, maybe six months ago well let me let me um, let me put this out there if it if it is if it is a hazardous waste issue that's not the purview necessarily of the Conservation Commission I will um, I can go out and maybe just knock on his door and just have a little site visit secondarily just just me I don't I don't know if it necessarily needs to hold up you know the completion of his work because I think it's a ancillary to it it's not necessarily related it's not right. related to what he's right. doing because right. work is on the other side right so so by your observations it looked complete and finished and ready for sign off okay okay so um, can we have a vote for issuing the certificate of compliance Okay, a second. All those in favor? Okay. Got to sign it. There's two there. This one's for you on uh, 196 Lowell Street. Okay. Okay. Chuck before I lose it. Exactly. Um, 
Okay, so since it's past 7.05, by my watch, we'll take up the uh, matter of uh, order of condition 270-0568, um, and this is under the town trail work permit, new boardwalk in Bear Meadow. Um, Mr. Bork, come on up and tell us about your project. Welcome. Go ahead and introduce your project and let us know what you plan to do. trees <laughs> that's okay we need to see this okay okay so um, we have before us a cost estimate and some uh, schematics okay um, now the um, the how are you going to uh, provide the the manpower for getting this work done? Okay. okay. Feel free to um, send a, send an email to Chuck as well when you start this project, and if if by chance you know anybody happens on the commission has a chance some some of us have in the past gone out to support some of the builds on that so um, and um, and in terms of so that's the the effort what about the uh, materials how are you going to is this going to come out of your own pocket are you doing some fundraising for that or okay okay Great. Um, have you any materials support from any local companies, or have you approached to anybody? Okay. Um, just I, I think based on my memory in the past, some some local companies have have been generous in their support of the Cub Scouts in projects like this. So I just thought I'd bring it up as one possible avenue. Um, any questions or comments about this project from the commission? Just one comment. When we were out there, Terry and I took a look out there this Sunday. There's a tree right here, and you've got a, a, an angle right here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, <laughs> there are a lot of roots right yes. there. Are you going to have trouble? I just think you might have some trouble putting this particular, uh, is it a piling that you put in? Post. A post. A post? Yeah. Have you taken any uh, kind of like probes yet? Because I think, I don't know. This is one of our concerns when we're looking at being able to do without, without the roots there. We have checked that if we can. Is it, uh, would it be possible to put posts on either side, or do you need it at that angle? You probably need it at the angle. I believe it needs to be yeah. at that angle. I don't think it's at the angle. Maybe it could, it could come inside the roots instead of outside. Then you could gain maybe about that much, and that might give you enough away from the roots to trickle it up. And, you know, there would still be a good support on the corner. I'm just thinking of ease of construction that well. Okay. You could consider a um, post spike just in that location. Um, if water is an issue, 
if uh, flotation is an issue or water flow is an issue, the rest of the post would hold it in place in the downward manner. And then in that area, I don't know if you've ever seen the post spikes. They have a spike on the bottom made, made out of steel or galvanized steel or painted steel. The better ones are galvanized steel. And you would drive that into the ground. I think the spike's probably about this long. And then the post would just sit on top of that. So it would, it would be a bearing structure just in that location. Okay. And then in the other locations, you'd have your standard posts, and they would provide the downward force so it wouldn't float away. Unless you needed a bigger spike. So you might have to come up with that's really wet around there. It that's might, true. It might sink in a that's little true. bit. So we'd have to, you might have to get a bigger one. But and then the other. do some probings first and see how deep it is, and then get the right one. The other option would be to do, a, to do a two posts on either side. To the beam in between. You mean over here? So you would do, yeah, well, you'd do like one here and one here, and then a beam would go in between what well, would be underneath. So, mm. so like you, you know, if you run into problems, you can have these options just to I consider. I wouldn't want to get too far away from that corner. It, it might end up being like, being, it looks like that tree is struggling to stay away from the wood area. Yeah. No, the roots are mostly on So the, the roots side. will be on the other side, right? They're going to be in the side where the, where the air is, so. And yeah, it, that yeah, makes too sense. Bad you couldn't redesign it to have two posts or two structures on either side and then carry that joist mm -hmm. along the yeah. Yeah, along like this. that area, that inside corner. I mean, you could do that. You just you just modify it as a, when you're out on site. Right. But right. If you need to. Sounds right. pretty simple just with the spike going in. Right. Just so you don't get stuck when you get out there. <laughs> yeah. We want this to go as smoothly as possible. Right. I guess it's uh, November 20th and 21st, 2014. That's when uh, the dates that were picked for this project. To build and install? Yeah. Okay. So I, I had a question. Um, it looks like you're going to meet the existing uh, boardwalk on the other side. Are you going to have a step or try to make it as uh, close to the ground? Like I'm using uh, backfill. There's the kind that trails can be uses, and all their trails, they already said, they would allow it. They provide us with the same backfill that they used. Okay. Great. So there won't be a step. There's a ramp. I know there's, there's, plenty, pack. Of, there's plenty of leftover pack in the yeah. so you could always get that if you want it, if you know where that is at the other end of the, the walk. Yeah. Take all you want. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any more questions? No? Any any questions from the public at this point? No? How about how about from you? No? Okay. Okay. Oh, one question. Um the post going in, are these are these are all treated? So they're not just right okay, so they're not kind of brought out. Okay. Um is there a, a motion to approve the project? Well, I'll approve the project. I okay. think it's a great thing because that's a very heavily aerially tracked area. And yeah. People walking in that mud makes a mess. It's probably just perfect. But I'm very happy to see that. Yeah. So I'll recommend it. Okay. Make a motion. I make a motion. All right. I'll second. All those in favor? <coughs> okay. Congratulations. Project approved with some comments and feedback. Um, um, Chuck, do we do you write a new? I just remind me how this goes. Um, it's just a letter that says he meets the criteria of the trail wide permit and gives a description of right, which what he's, he's doing. Which he has. So, and then okay, I can, I can so add. we don't have to sign anything. On. Well, there, it, yeah, it requires your signature. Okay, hand it over, I'll sign it. By the way, Tony, have you talked to Tom Gardner on trail about making some extra material that you might have? Because we do, there is some leftover. We're doing a pine meal project, but there could be other kinds of leftover. You might be able to get some of that. We're talking kind of quietly tonight, so I don't know if you heard all that. But did you get all that? Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for, thanks for coming out. And uh, good luck. Maybe we'll see you on the 20th, 21st, if any, and if anyone from the public wants to go help out. Um, I can't even, sorry, this will be in, it's in Bear Meadow. Yeah.
yeah. behind the Matera yeah. cabin. Yeah. So there's a nice view of pool right down there. Oh, right nice. The corner, so it's good to have a trail going right over there. Good. Yep. With good clearance, with that good eight-inch clearance too, it'll be great. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, the uh, notice of intent for the our 710 hearing, uh, the notice of intent 270-0634 for Sturgis Park, um, Pine Ridge Road, that is going to be continued, correct, to the next meeting. So if anybody from the public is here for that, that's continued to the next meeting, which, let's see, what's the date of that one? It's November 12th. <coughs> Okay. Two o'clock uh, this afternoon, we got a uh, email requesting a continuance for this hearing until the next scheduled meeting in November. Okay, is that because they didn't do any work yet on it? Because they were supposed to do some preliminary yeah, exploration and then no work had been done. Um, okay. Okay. I did go out to the project and, and check out the bank. Okay. There was no, you couldn't even tell where it blew Erosion out and they lost. Okay. So it must be underground. Okay. Okay. Well, then, uh, uh, then we're going to take up the matter of the 715 hearing. Um, the request for determination of applicability for 86 Forest Street, Map 39, Lot 6, Lorden, Sage Development. Um, is there a representative here? Yep. Welcome, sir, please, just for the record. Um, introduce yourself um, and uh, present your project. Thanks. Uh, I'm Jim Lorden. I'm the uh, property owner and uh, we'll be the builder uh, when we get to that point on the project. I've passed everything. For those of you that aren't familiar with 86 uh, Forest Street, it's, a, uh, uh, it's about a 39,000 square foot lot, um, very deep. It's only about 95 feet wide. Uh, there's currently a house on it. It sits very close to the street um, and very close to the wetland. It's, um, uh, it was destroyed by fire last winter. Um, so we're proposing to raise the house um, and um, move the new house entirely outside the 100 foot buffer. Um, that would be nice for the, for the new owner. It's also a win for the town and for the conservation. Um, uh, lands in the area um, will reduce the impervious area within that hundred feet from uh, currently about 2800 down to about 1200 square feet of impervious area um, and uh, the only work that uh, will be required during that we're here uh, to request permission to be able to raise the house uh, uh, remove and um, and relocate the current driveway and do the same thing for the utilities um, there will be some additional grading that's required uh, in an effort to keep the driveway to the left-hand side of the property, again, as far away from the wetlands as possible. Um, but um, that regrading is, uh, is relatively minor, and it leaves the property fairly uh, consistent with, uh, with the, the way that it's, it's graded currently. Uh, part of that um, is there is currently a drain pipe that runs underneath uh, the driveway at 100 uh, Forest Street. Uh, that was put there a number of years ago, I'm told, uh, by the owners um, uh, of 100 Forest Street. And uh, we're not proposing to block that up at all. In fact, uh, what we're gonna do, that was put there, I guess, to make sure that uh, no water drained over his driveway. Um, so we're just proposing as we uh, have kind of a, it's kind of a natural bowl if you look at the topography there, then that will remain. So we're going to uh, kind of just bury the end of that pipe and put a drain, uh, a catch basin on it to collect any water that does, uh, does get there. I don't think there'll be as much water, uh, you know, given the other improvements that we've made, uh, but there's no, um, there's no plans right now to, uh, to remove that pipe. Can you just sort of point out on the plan exactly which pipe you're talking about? Yeah, this, the, the, the big pipe is not the one I'm talking about. No. That's, yeah. it's, Are you it's, talking it's, about the 12-inch CMP drain? Correct. Okay. okay. That pipe is, is there and uh, we'll just be connecting to the end of it with a catch basin uh, so that any water that does collect there because of that natural bowl um, will drain as it does currently. Shouldn't be any changes. Um, other than that, um, like I said, we'll just simply be removing the house and uh, the, any you know driveways, walkways, 
any other impervious surfaces, and the fence that runs around the property, and uh, then simply re-landscaping it uh, and running the new driveway to service the new house, which will be uh, more than 100 feet. This is not really, I guess, important for the purposes of this meeting, but it will sit at the high point on the lot. Okay. So um, one thing I just wanted to start out with was um, it's looking at your proposed site development plan side of your the schematic you gave us. The um, there are two trees to be removed between 25 and 35 feet. Yes, I don't um, know if they were noticed on the walk, but they're completely dead. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, okay. they're. I mean, I can leave them if you want, but they're they're just dead. And well. <laughs> was that in the back of the house? I don't know if you happen to notice. It, no, it was on the side of the house, probably kind of, if you look, it's kind of um, almost directly across from where the walkout of the current basement is. Okay. Um, and can I just, um, I'm sorry to, to ask you to re-explain, but can you just sort of um, go back into that 12-inch CMP drain and the reason for the work? on that and what's going to happen? Um, well, we're just looking to preserve it. Um, I've spoken with uh, the owner of 100 okay. and apparently he put that pipe in. I don't okay. have any need to remove it, um, but the intention of that pipe um, was to uh, take any surface runoff that would, you know, potentially run across his driveway and have it run underneath his driveway. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have a need to remove that. <coughs> we don't plan to change the grades there very much. So we'll just simply, rather than uh, rather than bury the end of it, we'll just simply uh, put a catch basin on the end of it. So it'll it'll function just as it was. So intended. it'll drain. It'll infiltrate there. Correct. Yes. I think I don't think much water is going to get there to infiltrate because of the increased impervious. I mean pervious cover that we have but <laughs> but it's it seems like it's flowing from the neighbor's property towards that drain though yes no it's flowing oh, it's from not. my property oh across okay. the neighbor's property okay. underneath okay. the driveway okay so the pipe's going to be filled nope oh. we we'll just leave it as is okay. and I'll put it I'll put a catch basin on the end of it okay so it'll do exactly what it's doing now okay all right um any additional questions from other members of the commission? Yeah, go, ahead. go ahead, Chuck. So, same thing with It's not something we talked about when I was out on site. Um, and there's no, I don't see a detail for that. So there's no detail for that. I think uh, you're just showing a 24 by 24 inch. Um, it's written on there. NDS cage basin with 24 by 24 inch grate. Rim uh, 106.5 is the uh, is the elevation on that. An NDS catch basin is basically an elbow. It's a it's a yeah. right a high density polyethylene elbow with a grade on it. So, so there's no size? deep sump so what part of, part to it. No, but it's no. going to be it's going to be catching uh, lawn and it's more of an area drain and not a catch basin. Right. So so the, my only concern was how to how to, you know, to think about this and, and to know that it's lawn and we're talking about fertilizer and things like that with a direct shot into, you know, the BVW on the other side of the driveway. So I don't know what, what you can propose for that or if there's anything to be proposed for that, but just thinking that that, that probably would be um, something that concerns me. Yeah, I, I don't have a need for that. I don't think there's going to be a lot of runoff that catches that. I think it'll, it'll uh, infiltrate before it ever gets there. Now that we've removed, you know, the house uh, and all of the concrete that's covering the, uh, the patio and so forth. Um, so I mean, if, if you'd be happy with it, uh, uh, we could just we could cap it uh, if that was preferable. You know, uh, you don't have to cap it. I, I was. You know, I don't know. I was kind of hoping Brian had an idea, but um, you know, I can just say one of the conditions I could just put in is slow release fertilizer, uh, at least in that lawn area, uh, keeping it to a minimum or not at all would be nice if they didn't use it, but that might be unlikely. 
I mean, if there's a driveway on the other side of that lot line, it either goes through a drain, which is paved, like pavement, or it goes over the pavement, which is pavement. So it's really six and one half dozen the other. If that's, you know, what what's happening there now, it's just carrying it under the driveway. So right. either the runoff is going to flow over his driveway or it's going to flow under his driveway. And it's going to be a similar situation, I mm -hmm. think. So um, regardless of whether we get rid of it or we leave it. Right, but you could try to infiltrate it, like with a kind of right. like a rain guard right. or an amended right. area in front of that catch basin, so you had more infiltration directly into the ground. And it didn't make its way into the stream, so that's possible. That's, that's so another that's, thing. I think very possible, actually, with um, um, the area where that the end of that drain is now. If you look at the existing conditions, you'll see a. Uh, a little bit of a walkout uh, set of stairs down to what's currently a walkout in the basement. That's kind of at the base of the bowl, and there's currently a, kind of a almost a path where there's uh, it leads. And you can see there's stone on either side, <coughs> ringing the the end of the drain currently. Mm -hmm. And so, all we're proposing to do there again is to bring the existing property back to where it was before, uh, before they dug that out, bring it up to the top of the wall. So what's underneath that could be filled with stone um, to, uh, to infiltrate it before it ever gets to the pipe. Mm -hmm. And then the pipe would be for overflow, for higher flow events. Correct. Which you're not, you're not worried about fertilizer at that point anyway. Mm -hmm. What could be raised up? Entertaining, you know, for overflow events. Well, if he, like he was saying, if he leaves it down where it is, then I'm saying that the, the grade, then. What do you mean? You well? can do more like a dry well, right? Rather than that pipe. The pipe will probably receive a lot more rain because now the house is not in the way. Getting increased flood water. Well, his, his argument is it's not going to because now you don't have the roof discharging over there. You know, the runoff from the roof, it's going to go right onto the ground. It's all going right onto the ground and the grass or whatever okay. will slow yeah, down and flow sense. and it'll be infiltrated for the most part. Yeah, instead of making a direct connection, could you do a um, sort of uh, maybe just uh, just have an opening in the bottom and then have the pipe I don't know what elevation the pipes at it's at 104, 104 is that what yeah. it is so we're at 106 so could, could you fill in well we were, that was the plan was to fill bring it up to 106 which is the top of the wall that's the need for the catch basin so what I'm saying is if we just simply fill that in with all stone underneath and put you know the loam on top of that you're going to get that additional so you did, could you do stone at 102 10, 102 103 two feet of stone then the pipe and then yeah. that would overflow through that okay. that seems to work okay so we have to pull the concrete out there anyway there's currently like i said kind of like a concrete path that brings the water right from the from the house um, one thing on um, that I don't see um, on the proposed plan is you know something that we we do tend to like to see in plans is some sort of plantings within that 25 foot zone um, are you are you would you entertain some plantings in that area some herbaceous cover or, or small shrubs or yeah, there's very, there's very, there are uh, some shrubs already there, and okay. I don't plan to change, you know, any of those whatsoever. There's also a beautiful okay. tree. It's just outside. It's kind of on the edge of the 30, okay, uh, five foot line. I, I don't know if you've been by the house, but it's a beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's a maple. I'm not sure. Uh, <coughs> it's, nice red. Anyway. It's, yeah, it's a beautiful red tree, and so we don't plan to change that area at all. It's very pretty. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really nice for that. To, to restore some of the native habitat, um, to see some native plantings. Um, and there's there's a variety of plantings that would thrive, you know, in a variety of situations. So I, I would encourage that. I, I would like to see that. 
and would probably add to some of the privacy for the house too to have a little bit of planting cover up front it's just a added side benefit but um, yeah, I think like I said there, there are there's current I don't know if they're native um, but there are plantings currently along okay. there it's a combination of albivite I think and uh, um, there's also um, I believe there's some rhododendron in there too there's also okay. some rhododendron on the property that needs to be relocated uh, because it's kind of underneath where the, where the driveway is going so oh, we could gotcha. potentially move that into that area gotcha. too, mm -hmm. if you were um, agreeable to that. To, okay. You know, it's a pretty plan. Where are yep. they located now? Uh, right now, it's a, it's about kind of on the. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, proposed uh, site development plan, kind of runs just along the right hand side of the of the driveway, so it's actually in okay. where the driveway is going to be. They're very big. <laughs> okay. And it's just on the other side of that stone wall. Right? Yeah, they, they, yes, exactly. I think I, I had the same question when I was out at the site about plants in the 25-foot area. I think Jim brought up the fact that there was bushes and whatnot kind of as a shelter between the driveway and the lawn yeah. or the house, and he wasn't, you weren't going to remove those. No, just, we're just yeah. going to remove the fence that's yeah, in I just don't think Jack drew it on the plan. Yeah. A vinyl yeah. fence that's there that will be coming down. <coughs> okay. Any other questions from the commission at this point? Okay, I'll open up to the public. Any questions from the public about this project? Jim, uh, Excuse how close me. is that, that driveway going to be to us? Sir, if you don't mind, please um, just in, introduce yourself and where you live, for, just Bob for the record. I live at 84 Forest Street, right next door. Thank you. On the east side of the Well, you got to put the driveway in. We don't know how close the driveway is it's going to be to our driveway. I'm just kind of uh, estimating it based off of this, and I would. It looks to me like it's about 10 feet off the property line. Okay. So I'm not sure how far your driveway is from the property line. I think mine, mine's right on. The right property. on it. So, yeah. so we can. Uh, um, so you know, we'll kind of be running right beside that. Then. Yeah, but I mean, you're going to be 10 feet away, because I mean that's where we put our snow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions from the public? Okay. Um, so no more questions or comments from the commission? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion at this point. If anybody would like to, the commission would like to make a motion. I move that we uh, accept the RDA as submitted with uh, comments. So issue a negative determination? Yes. Okay. Okay. Chuck, did you have a question? Yeah, I forgot how you guys did that. Um, I just didn't understand if you were making a condition about the plants or not. And that's, I need to know that before we go that's forward. Really done. Well, do, if you wanted more plants, if you were satisfied with Jim's explanation that there are some there and he's going to move them about rhododendrons. Well, I, th I, th I think if if there's plantings that are going to get moved to that area and they're going to thrive and, and he's going to, you know, commit to keeping that vegetated, um, I think I think that would be sufficient. Um, yeah, a lot of beautiful plants that are kind of in the way currently. Okay. So um, I, th I think to fill it in, to establish that 25 foot, you know, and to get it populated with plants so that it's an area where that that kind of doesn't get touched, doesn't get cut or trimmed, or there might that, be some issue with, that the, would with be the, the town too. The town, in our research, that there, there is that 24 inch pipe drain. that runs underneath there. Is there is there an easement associated with that? Well, because that wasn't the on the problem. plan. That there is no easement. Um, it appears the town may have tried to do an easement at one time, but has no record of it. So okay. there's currently no, no easement. easement there. Okay. 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 I don't well, see a problem. That's probably yeah. going to have to change that pipe. Okay. All right. So there's a vote and it's seconded to issue negative determination. All those in favor? Opposed? None? Okay. All right. Um, we're granting 
we're approving a project with this negative determination. And uh, Chuck, did you happen to have a negative yes, I do have, uh, order drafted? Prepared. Negative determination drafted? Okay. And I'll add the uh, planting language. Okay. And the drywall language. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for coming in. So I have extra copies too if anyone wants to review it. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. There you go. Okay. At this point, then um, we're going to open the we're going to open the public hearing for notice of intent uh, DEP. I don't know if we have a DEP number yet at this we point do. for uh, thirty two Pond View Lane. Three five. Two seventy. Oh six three five. Oh six three five. Okay, so uh, all right, we will open up the public hearing for notice of intent DEP number two seventy dash oh six three five. It is opened now and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. We will conduct this hearing. Uh, the applicant will be pres will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports um, from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and and comments to the applicant. Uh, the public will then be given an opportunity to ask questions of the applicant which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. Uh, please sign in at the attendance sheet posted at the door. And at this time, um, the Conservation Commission, I'd like you to introduce yourselves, please, starting with you, Julie. Julie Roger, with Thank you. Rebecca Longwood. Anika Scanlon, chair. Brian Sullivan, vice chair. Sorry, sorry. Kelton Chuck Taroni, conservation administrator. Okay, and um, please, for the record, introduce yourself. I know we've seen you before, so. Good evening. I am Elizabeth Wallace from Hayes Engineering. Welcome. And uh, we're before you with a uh, addition project. Um, 23 Pondview Lane is currently a uh, developed single-family lot with a house, driveway, um, concrete patio in the rear uh, with uh, terrace planters, yard, and a retaining wall. Uh, there is a bordering vegetated wetland um, to the rear of the lot, which was uh, flagged earlier this month. And, um, What's proposed are two activities. The first is a, uh, an addition of um, 89 square feet. That's just going to extend from the house about four feet out, outward, uh, just to uh, enlarge that portion of the house. Uh, there's also um, going to be some Removal of the concrete patio and replacement with porous pavers. Uh, they're going to be extended out to the wall. Uh, so they're going to convert the uh, concrete patio to a, a porous uh, paver type surface. 
There's also going to be a walkway and stairway for which they'll have to remove the existing stairs. Uh, all work will occur uh, more than 50 feet away from uh, the wetlands. Uh, the addition will be addition and uh, patio work will be uh, conducted within areas of existing disturbance. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be an erosion control or temporary erosion control placed within the uh, grass lawn to catch any sediments that will uh, or might uh, come from the work. So. Uh, the uh, retaining wall will also act as a uh, deterrent to any uh, sediments that might uh, stray beyond the erosion control. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Well, the concrete patio rebuild, uh, repaving is not outside of 50 feet. Okay. She said is that is that correct? The yeah. the concrete patio. I measured 55 feet. Um, oh, okay. Because I'm using a scaled ruler to your plan, and it's it's uh, it's uh, 50 feet puts you kind of in between the Owen patio and the. Mm. Times two. Okay. I don't know if it's is there is it what's which is true? Is it did you measure in the field and it's definitely outside? I used a scaled measure and um, some discrepancy somewhere. Some discrepancy, but it's clearly past the thirty five. It's, uh, it's past the thirty five. Yeah, no good. Yep, yep. 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 I just um just wanted to get that. Um, so the taking up of the concrete patio is going to require, um, help me understand how that, how that's going to happen. This is going to require some jackhammering or? I would think so. I would think but so it's, too. But it's actually, uh, a bit cracked, so All right, I think, so. uh, it only needs a little help to, uh, okay. <laughs> it will fall apart. Okay. That's why they want to replace it. So, it's, so it's almost ready to be yeah. taken fall apart by hand. It's That's important. right. It's so a major, major crack. Okay. Right okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what? Oh, you can try to take a sledgehammer. Okay. Good <laughs> problem. Okay. Um, and you have the silt socks or equivalent erosion control shown yes. on the plan. Okay. Um, <coughs> Any questions? This seems pretty straightforward to me. Any questions mm -hmm. from the commission? Any other members? Any Chuck? Questions? Sure. Um, can you show me where the construction access is uh, for yeah, any of the work on the patio? And are you installing a, a new section of retaining wall, or are you working with inside the? Working with inside. With inside. So you're yeah. not installing any? <clears throat> not with stop. No. no. Uh, the construction entrance will be uh, gained both from the driveway and um, around the other side of the house. So you're going to, so you are going to attack this project from between the house and the um, silt mulch sock or silt sock. Is that, yes. Is that where you're going? You're going to be out there a lot. Yeah, that's where the uh, personnel will be. Uh, they will be. Uh, temporary storage of building materials, but hopefully that'll be kept back to the uh, driveway. What kind of machinery are you going to be out there with? Just big backhoes or bobcats, you know? I would think a bobcat, but I'm not bobcat sure. bobcat would be doing it. So, you know, you can't um, store the bobcat back there. That has to be 100 feet away. Yes. So the staging area was <coughs> located um, as far away from the BBW as possible. I also right. see a staging area on this plan. Where is that going to be located? Uh, it's true we don't have a designated area. Uh, we can put it uh, in front of the house outside the 100-foot buffer zone. 
Correct. Put it at the end of the driveway too. I mean, that's yeah. in that area is fine. Um, and this, you know, you're you're specking out a uh, silt sock. What's that composed of? Is that is that hay inside there? That's a. Uh, Biodegradable fabric with mulch inside, compost. or compost. Yeah. Different it says companies. twelve to eighteen, so you're going to be twelve inch, twelve inch mulch sock. Yes. Great. It it's level there, so uh, I don't expect any great uh, no. cement problems. No. It's pretty steep going down there from the, the masonry walls. Yes. It's true enough. Climb right there. Uh, it sounds sounds reasonable. I, I like the mulch sock. It's uh, it's a it's a nice barrier, and with the machinery back there, in close proximity, you're not going to you're going to notice it if you hit it. Right. I would like to say that most of the work uh, can be done by hand. Mm -hmm. you know, the laying up the brick and probably breaking up the uh, concrete. But, uh, um, there will definitely need to be something to dig with. Um, I'm tempted to say that if the construction access is, is, is not by way of the driveway, but it is instead south of the building, um, that the erosion control should probably be extended um, towards the southern property line. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I um, kind of agree with that. And I, um, is it Elizabeth? Or is it Elizabeth? Yes. Elizabeth. Wouldn't it, I, I just... I don't know. I wouldn't if it, if that were my house. I don't think I'd want the construction on the grass side on that south side. I I, I just think the uh, using the driveway makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's it's a bigger area. Um. Yeah, it'll be uh, determined uh, when the construction starts. Why they Why do they need to access this side here? Is there if they can't drive from the driveway side all the way around to the south side. So if we brought the erosion control up to the corner of the house there and made one access point, would that work? Or why wouldn't that work? If you would like the access to be from the driveway, we'd be happy to do that. Seems to address all the concerns. So yeah, let's do that. Turkey, you want to get the pull the sock around to the edge of the building? Yeah, touch the corner of the house. Questions from the commission? No? Any questions from the public at this point? Yes, sir. For the record, could you just yes. give your name and address? Good evening. Good Thank evening. You, um, for hearing me, my name is Tom Connery. I'm a member of the board of directors of the Reading Open Land Trust. Welcome. And so I would like to just ask a couple of questions um, of you, Miss Elizabeth, or the commission. So is this BVW that uh, we described the Fianna Mill Ice Pond? No. It is not. So the trust was notified because we are within some it. radius, and I, I haven't had the chance to examine the plan closely. So the land trust, as you might know, has divided up its land assets among a number of different directors, and this is the Vienna Mellites Pond is one of the assets that I oversee. Okay. If you saw, if, well, I don't know, if you're welcome to um, approach the commission and take a take a look at my copy. Uh, so the Reading Open Land Trust property looks to be here. Um, this being the wetlands, so this would be the wet area, the, the lowest elevation, lowest local elevation. Does that help at all? Sure, it does. So you know, our interest is really just the open space in the Fama Ice Pond. Mm -hmm. Um, and so our conservation agent seems to have gone through his diligence of asking about the, um, the type of erosion control and seemed satisfied with that. So uh, I presume the land trust would be too. If he could describe for me the difference between a wattle and you know the type of silt sock that would just so a wattle um, is filled with hay right. and in one in the same direction and it seems to flatten out. Plus, with machinery, you, you wouldn't notice it. I mean, I don't actually like using that at all, but I guess there is 
areas where you could use such a thing if you had a lot of lawn and you were way up um, building more than a 75 feet away or something like that. But th this is uh, this usually comes in a black and orange tube that is biodegradable, has mulch in it, and they actually just bring it out there and jet it in um, right on site. <coughs> very hard to move, and uh, you know it's very stable and it really locks into the ground. So. It's, it's a good product. It only gets down to what do you do with all that mulch when you're done. So it usually goes into the garden or something because it's perfectly fine. Because you actually take it up and just don't let it biodegrade. Well, if it, if, if it even just sat there, it's, it's just, you know, wood chips. Mm -hmm. That's all. And um, how many erosion controls are there? Is there one at the 50-foot buffer and then another one plus the retaining wall? No. So they're retaining, they have an existing retaining wall, and all the right. work that they're proposing is inside of that existing retaining wall, right. except for the fact that they need to work on this site. Um, they're going to be outside of that area, so they're going to have temporary disturbance in the lawn, mm -hmm. and they're going to have to seed that, I would assume, afterwards and rake that out and make whatever it looks like now, I'm assuming every own homeowner would want it to look the same way. So we typically ask for erosion control, but in this kind of urban development, we erosion control is going to be our limit of work also. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. Okay. So there's not two different areas. Okay. And then I guess my last question, you know, just in terms of stormwater is that we've heard about porous pavers. So are they actually porous pavers? Porous pavement material that's used for patio purposes? Well then, what is, do you or know what the, they're making that up out of? Well, they look porous they, simply they, because there's, you know, mm -hmm. lines in between the patio pavers. That's, that's the, why it's that's the, the that's paver the itself is not porous. So there's a lot of way pavers can go in. Sometimes you actually put down material underneath it that's impervious. But the thought behind this is where they're saying they're porous pavers. They're just going to put sand down, and they're going to probably compact that to a level, and then put the pavers interlocking bricks or something right. like that with gaps in between them. And those gaps are filled with decom decomposed granite something like that mm -hmm. fills in the gaps but essentially it's not impervious so it, the patio it, itself yeah. but we're distinguishing between the patio and the paver the paver is not in porous it's not a porous some are. paver some are some yeah. are this one may be more porous it's definitely more porous than the patio that's there now okay there are different styles that they that they make they make ones yeah. that fit together that actually have <coughs> an open space in between when right. you lock them together and you right. fill the open space with gravel or, right. or, or crushed stone. Yep. And there are also uh, porous pavers that are actually porous. It's basically a concrete with a very open, right. uh, with a very, a very open aggregate and the water drains right through it. Right. So those are, I haven't seen those used as much. They're mainly used in commercial instances, but, um, but the kind that I've seen more frequently used is the old, you know, with the ones with the space that have the, the uh, crushed stone. Mm -hmm. And it literally, you could just dump water right on it and would go right down, assuming you don't have a restrictive layer underneath. So. Mm. Okay. okay, that's my question. Okay, any other questions from the public? Thank you for coming in, Mr. Connery. Um, it, I looked at my map online, and it looks like the property here is a parcel of land open owned by the Reading Open Land Trust that does touch 28. Um, and it's, is it near Eric's? No. It's in between Brentwood. Looks like it's actually north. Fairchild and uh, Brentwood. Yeah, it's between Fairchild and Brentwood. Does that give you a sense? Yeah. Okay, so I didn't see a mapped surface water body there that's any help so um, okay any other questions from the public or the Commission no nope. okay um, this seems like a, another fairly straightforward project and with the appropriate protections you know um, impacts to the resource area 
um, will not occur. So um, I don't see any objection to moving forward with this notice of intent. Is there a motion? To, uh, to approve this notice of intent? I, I move we uh, approve the notice of intent um, and issue an order of conditions. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, or is there a second? second? Sorry. I'll second. Okay. Seconded. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Um, <coughs> so is there. I have one prepared, but the applicant has not seen the notice of intent. So. Uh, do you have any objection to just receiving the, the order of conditions or? It's a <coughs> Okay. Um, were you uh, requiring that we uh, revise the plan, or are you going to put in a? a uh, we'll just modify it out. We'll just the field. modify it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. That way you can get it sooner and. Excellent. Yep. That's yep. the answer we like. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Well, then Thank we'll you. we'll move forward with this. Thanks for coming in. Great. And uh, do you want it? Do you want us to sign it tonight, Chuck? Yeah, I think uh, okay. I could, you know, approve as that. amended. Okay. Uh, and make some changes. There's, and, uh, there's only the silks and socks. Yeah. Change. Yeah. Um. And I'll, while he's circulating, that I'll take. I'll entertain a motion to close it. I move to close the hearing. Okay. For twenty-three Pond View Lane. Okay, I second. All those in favor? All right. Business done. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Okay. Um, Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So, um, Chuck, do you know is somebody coming in for the uh, for the new boardwalk supports for Pinevale? Yeah. Someone, okay. Someone is coming in. Okay. They're already here. Oh, all right. All right. Someone. Someone's coming someone's in. Someone's here. They're already here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well then um, let's get into, it's 804, let's get into the matter of um, order of conditions 270-0568 um, under the town trail work permit, the new boardwalk supports for Pinevale. Right, so Pinevale is a, a huge existing roof, but about two-thirds of it's in very bad condition. The planking itself is, is fine, but all the supports underneath it are pretty much sunk in or rotted out. So the proposal is, is not to re put a whole new one in. Okay. The, the, the objective is just to lift all the existing planking up and put down a whole new foundation. Uh, and we have a lot of uh, four by four plastic uh, which we can use. And um, John Fudo also gave us a bunch of six by eight big pieces. They're really big. Uh, yeah. And Will Finch says they cut like butter with a chainsaw. So we, we can uh, put all, a lot of good, um, you know. Uh, support underneath it and uh, it's mainly in the southern section western side maybe that's the worst condition but all the way around that first circle there so all these little highlighted areas are places where there's going to be right repair. there was work done on the bridge on the bottom a couple of months ago um, mm -hmm. there was a boy scout project that had built it but they didn't put any ramps to it well the ramps were about this steep and so we extended the size of it on both sides put ramps in and that was on the bottom there so this work, this work here is in place, not no expansions. No, there's no expansions. So it's just it's just, it's just replacing the existing foundations, yeah, yeah. On, and we're not changing the route at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think there's one or two places where we're going to move it about five feet, just it goes around, and we get it further away from the wetlands. Right. And we're doing we're pulling them off and getting them on a dry ground on the northwest corner of that loop. But it's essentially same structure as same structure is yeah, actually yeah. same. All right, so you're lifting up the boardwalks, 
you're you're resetting right. the support and we use four by fours or six by eight or maybe some of that six inch piping that we still have around right right and right just just we just prop it all up again okay some is just sunk down so that the boards are right on the ground so need some work sounds good are you are you able to make these repairs are these going to be uh, surgical repairs where the platform essentially stays where it is or do you have to just dismantle an entire section and rebuild it no we can pop them right up like that and just free them from the foundations and mm -hmm. move them off the side build a new foundation and put it back down okay that's the intent on it because they're all in good shape you know, all mm -hmm. the runners as well as the planks they all seem to be in good shape it's just the, just the foundation the foundation is real bad okay. and probably um, what they've learned in the last five or ten years in building boardwalks to get better shape mm -hmm. a lot of it's just old um Telephone poles mm -hmm. that are sunk in there and um, they kind of rock pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I have a retaining wall in my backyard made of telephone poles. It's not very much. Okay. Um, um, we did a survey of the Trails Committee stockpile and we have enough in there to just do the whole thing. So it's, we're going to go right ahead of it. Materials? Yeah. yeah. All, all, the, all the four okay. by fours and six by eights and, and any, any other. Rudders and stuff we may need. Um, we have enough material there. Okay, right. so there are a few places where we're going to extend the boardwalk a little bit because it's not a contiguous loop, and every once in a while there's like five or ten feet, and some of those areas were really wet, so we're just going to, you know, connect them. So they get extra eroded and yeah, those and areas mucked so. up and um, and what, give me an example of where on this plan that's going to happen. That the question mark one. Um, um, I mean about adding, the a, wet few, area, adding a few add more board, planking boardwalk in between um, where it says bridge 20 feet on the right hand side yep. mm -hmm. and the bog bridge composite be, that section along there is probably going to get we're trying to connect the dots on a few places okay oh, yeah so the areas where there's question marks you're gonna try and get to that's a hopeful kind of what the areas where, so there's a number of question marks on here. So yeah, down I'm on the bottom. To, well, right, the bridge, 20 foot. Here. Oh, is the, here. Is the question mark just the amount of distance? Yeah, you're just oh, okay. questioning the, the 20 foot long. It might be 25 feet long bridge. Yeah, I think that's. Okay. Ah. Okay, and then Den. I didn't put this legend down. I think Kim put it, so I okay. didn't ask her on that. S so then the area down at the bottom where it says, wet area, add boardwalk, question mark, 100 feet, question mark. Can you give us any more um, specifics about that? I don't, I know we went right through there, just going in. I don't remember talking about Because that's a lot of boardwalk it. to. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I think I'd want to see a little more than just an arrow on a plan. We went there a about a year ago and it looked rather wet and we thought it could, it could use it. We were out there a couple of months ago and it was pretty dry. So now I'm not sure whether or not and we didn't discuss building one along there when we went out so I don't think that's okay. in the jurisdiction right now okay yeah because if you combine these two 100 feet add boardwalk 100 feet add 50 that's 156 feet in this area yeah according no. to those yeah statements and I see this question marks there um, well there's not a question mark here so but what you're saying that's not part of what you are proposing with this that this the wet area 100 foot it, we weren't discussing doing anything over there right and then this um, 56, add 56 feet here to this bog bridge. That must be one of those wet areas. That's that really, yeah, it's a really, that's one of the, well, the wettest areas we have there. So I think we're just making the bog bridge longer. I don't recall discussing it, but I know that was the original plan. I well, can double check on that. Yeah, I don't know about, um, I'll just speak for myself. I, I would like to... Um, I would like to get out there and, and walk this um, in person. Mm -hmm. um, for my comfort level, there's too many question marks, and I'm not, if even if we did approve something tonight, I don't know what I'd be approving. Yeah, um, with the number of question marks on this plan, so <laughs> um, I think I'd like to nail down kind of bullet by bullet item mm -hmm. exactly what's going to be, which foundations are going to be uh, refurbished and where and how much additional boardwalk and how's so it going to be built and get a couple of people in the trails committee and, and meet them yeah and yeah them. yeah tomorrow would be a good day 
Tomorrow would be a good day. Yeah, boring rain. <laughs> in that I, I, you know, it's funny. Yeah, I told him. It really comes up. You know, I told yeah. my kid he's been asking yeah. to go for a hike. So, this is you know what? I think tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to Pine Vale. Okay. We'll get lost in Pine Vale. Okay. All right. So that, and that, so it looks like that would work for your schedule, too? Yeah. Because we have our next meeting on the 12th, and it still could be. We still have a um, sorted out for the 15th. And because we don't have to do a lot of pre buying or anything, we just whenever we're ready to go, we're ready to go. So it won't hold us up. Yeah. Just, just to be clear, I'm all in favor of refurbishing, replacing existing foundations. I just mm. think the only thing that makes me uncertain, because I don't know exactly what I would be approving, <coughs> yeah. would be those, you know, when you're talking about add boardwalk question mark, 100 feet question mark. Yes. You know, we'll we just asked a. Let's firm this we, up. We, we just got a full schematic from a Cub Scout for 28 feet of new boardwalk. Eagle Scout. Eagle Scout. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm in the Cub Scout world, so Cub that's kind of how I'm thinking. <laughs> um, it's my life. I'm sorry. He might be offended by that. No disrespect. Um, yeah, that wasn't going to So, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, sure. I just would like to see a little bit more detail. Well, I'll meet with the um, turf committee chairman. And we'll firm up this map a little yeah. better too. I mean, what what is is there any other? The only other comment that I would make comments? is that um, I'm not sure we're building new gosh, I think I know we're building new boardwalk flies, but building it on an existing trail. So we have we have three steps to this trail wide permit. The first is we don't need notice at all. The second, we get notice but we don't treat it as a notice of intent. Um, so you wouldn't have to alert the butters, nothing in the newspaper, and it doesn't rise to the level of great plans and all that. And the third would be a notice of intent for new work. So this would be new work on an existing trail. I mean, and, and then the whole idea of doing all that work in advance to get that trail-wide permit out there and working in kind of a living, breathing document is to try to understand the spirit of that. And I, I think that although we're adding 100 feet, I think it's still maintenance. It's a because trail. It's an existing trail. Right. It's a trail right. that right. kind of evolved into this wet area. And yeah. it needs, and in, they're not reinventing the wheel. Right. So. And people are supposedly using it. And that is I not think people would use it more if it was. Um, well, it's not. It was a better it's trail. not good for the bog okay. for people to be walking over the bog. Right. Yeah, I'd actually like to see what the what the tracks these guys. I know <laughs> well, some of the neighbors. What are going does in. it look like the day after all this construction? That's that would make me feel better. I'd prefer to watch it. Well, let um, me take say, a sidewalk then. I did. I did read the little uh, paragraph on the back side here, um, which I assume goes with this plan. And that, that says no new work is planned mm -hmm. and no bog, they won't be extending bog bridging or building new boardwalk. No, and, if that's, and if that's truly what, that's what that's, yeah, I that's would, what we I would be it. approving, then, then uh, I yeah. don't have a major issue with that. Um, it's just that it's on the map. So we could just verify that is true and change the map and put it back out here. If the Trails Committee would like to do that. Yeah, it should be easy enough. Verify. Yep, okay. Just so it's clear. <coughs> and then we'll send it to you, Chuck. Have an update with version of it, or? Well, I, I, we could we I'm could not. vote on this. I think that we're saying that you want to go out there anyways. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go out there anyway. And I'm yeah. saying that yeah. even adding 20 feet on an existing trail that they already have 100 feet of boardwalk on seems to be still in category two, which means we could approve it at our next meeting. Yeah. Maybe you want, but if you just let me know that you want more detailed plans or some sort of drawing of what it's going to look like, assume they're just going to match what's out there. Well, I'll even go so far as to say I, I'm willing to approve this um, as described on the on the back side, as spelled out here. Um, I'm willing to go ahead and approve that. I will still go out tomorrow, um, and if they want to come back with <laughs> with additional boardwalk plans. To address okay. these, then, well, then um, a formal site visit wouldn't be necessary, or, or we could still plan one no, for I like site Sunday visits. I, yeah, I may not be able to get to all of them, but I, I like going out. I should point out that some of the neighbors went out and cleaned up most of the poison ivy. Oh, did uh, they? Did that, and the Cub Scouts went out and repainted the trail signs. Great. 
So you could tell because there was drip paint all over the place. <laughs> Funny. Oh, that's great. I had to find the way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was low VOC paint. Okay. Um, I don't have so a letter that represents what you stated. So okay. I could, and, and I could just sign something. Yeah. Is, is there or no? Well, we, we are planning to do it the 4th, 15th, and 16th in November. Yeah. And so we've all got so there is a little bit of our volunteers, and that's the best yeah. date for them to be available. Okay. Okay. Um, do we want to? Well, why don't we, why don't we move? Motion. Yeah, go for it. Um, Read my mind, make motion. So I make a motion that um, we approve the uh, boardwalk renovations as described as shown on the map and described on uh, the paragraph that's on the back of the map yeah uh, okay i'll second that all those in favor okay 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 so you've got that if you want to yep. if you want to go do additional boardwalk we are not approving new construction um and Chuck, uh, so I'll, I'll sign a letter whenever you're ready. Five minutes, I can afterwards just make those changes, and then okay. you can sign it tonight. I'll do that. Okay. No. Okay. 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 Is that that? That's the end of our uh, hearings. So I'm going to. This is um, the. So we have one left, which is the continuation to we um, approved this and it was all about writing so at 118 Willow Street we approved that order of conditions oh, right. and I wrote it in right. between meetings right and now we're to discuss the order of conditions and um, Tom's here right welcome back and the applicants welcome back and um, get this out so if I can address the commission for this second um, I spoke with Chuck there were you know just minor language changes to make it better for the site and, and Chuck agreed with, with all of those. It's our, our only real question here is um, on page 14, condition A1, which is um, calling for a essentially a deed restriction added to the deed and calls for the 25-foot zone to be preserved in a natural forested condition. But if you remember, this site is a clear lawn backyard and they don't own all of the lawn even, but um, that condition doesn't really seem to fit this this project of the property. So I was okay. I'm sorry to ask, but can you just re remind me? Uh, say that again. Are you uh, talking page, about A1? Yeah, page 14, A1. A1. And I do. I mean, I've got the plans and the and the project yeah. photos. If you need to be reminded, I can I've got the that. plans yes. here. Um, but if you remember, we talked about. Um, the you know having basically at grade bounds because of yep. the lawn and how you know really didn't fit the site all that well so that was kind of the the right. approach and this this just seems to go a little bit too far the next condition which requires the bounds be installed and and kept in perpetuity establishes essentially a restriction on the deed that that requires those things to be in in there. Uh, so it seems like sort of redundant, and then the, making it be in a natural forestry condition just seems to not really be in the sort of spirit of what we talked about for the approval. But. Um, yeah, I remember our long discussion about how do we demarcate that 25-foot zone of natural vegetation. Right. Um, and, um, and thought what we came to was a raised, as you proposed, a raised bound, stone bound set along the southern property line, and then a flush mount bound along the eastern property line. Right. Line. Yeah. And 1B, um, one one B, the way it's written actually provides some flexibility of either having it be raised or flush, but if it's flush it has to be sistered with a um, pipe. A metal. Piece yeah. metal, so and metal detector. Component. And I was talking to Chuck. I mean, this is a little bit yeah. of an aside, but I think if you allow alternative markings um, of a 25 foot, such as plants or whatever, one thing I've done when I've been a conservation agent is required the metal to be there, so that you always, you know, 20 years from now you're reading this thing, you go out, it's all lawn, 
most public works departments have these, you know, survey metal detectors that right. you can pick it up from pretty far away mm -hmm. and you just can <coughs> find it and say, hey, by the way, there's supposed to be something right here. Yeah. It's just like a disc that's on the top of that? Um, it, you just put like a piece of rebar right next to oh. the, so you put in the bound and then you just drive right next to it, a pipe or a piece of rebar down, you know, even below grade a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it just gives you something for the detector to pick up on. And if, you, if you're planting, you can put it right next to the plant and just drive it down, you know, six inches below grade even, and you can find it. The iron's good for the plant? Yeah, it doesn't hurt yeah. well, for most plants. But. Chuck, what do we do? Um, I know we went back and forth for a long time with that, that property that wasn't this one. It had an existing lawn, and we had one of the conditions we had. I don't know if it was an RDA. It might have been an RDA. One of the conditions that we had was that the, the property shall be maintained in its, in its current state is shown on yeah. blah 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 blah. I went back and forth for about two hours on that one. That so language, yeah, I could. Can we can we I use can't that? Remember instead? that language? I can't. Uh, yeah, it was something to the I effect find of it. as shown on the plan dated blah blah blah. blah you know. Yeah, and we. So we'll go back and we'll use that language instead of what's here now, yeah. which kind of captures in time this the way this lawn is, uh, the way the property we did. is. We did work on that pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> which property was that? There's a condition in here somewhere, Chuck, maybe you can find it, I know I've read it, that um, you can't do anything in the 25 foot without approval of the Conservation Commission. That's uh, A1. Yeah, so I mean, I think that, well, well, A1 is the is the deed restriction. There's another another piece of language there about working uh, beyond. I'd have to read for it again. It seemed like a standard condition, but it. Um, I mean, perhaps you could like if you struck A1 and added language to A2 that. Um, that the 25-foot uh, zone shall not be altered from its present condition without the approval of the Conservation Commission and keep that in perpetuity? Well, I think this is the same argument that we went through when we had that other language. I should, I could go get it. I'm gonna, I don't remember what the property was. It's worth the wait. I mean, yeah, okay. you're talking about a perpetual okay. condition on it. I think we can Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind getting? I'll just do a little <laughs> five-minute recess. Yeah. You know, the address. Well, the address. Yeah. Five-minute recess.
Okay. okay. It was. Is this the giraffe? I don't know if this is. And this is the first one I found. Yeah, no, this is it. I, I think this could be a dust and dwarf. I mean, obviously, it has to re reflect the flush bound. And, right. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that essentially. A one and combine this with the language that's in A two, which talks about the bounds. I think um, I think the essential language is right after the colon for the next that whole Maintain first sentence. Yeah, and I ten foot no structure zone. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure where the and you you have the plan out. You can yeah, I do. Have where's the, plan the existing out. shed? I think that's outside the thirty five. The existing the one shed. I'm pretty sure. The one it, is. Out, pretty sure it, is. it looks like it's well enough, well outside. It's yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But if you want to check, I've got a. S oh yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 No, there's no doubt it's outside. So, yeah, so everything, that would be fine. there's that would no structure be. within 35 feet. Right. Exists. I mean, I think that would be, that language okay. adjusted would work. And then the rest of the order, I think, is is good. I mean, I can tell you that the things that Chuck and I talked about, there was a dewatering condition that called for no closer than 75 feet. I asked that that get changed to 50, but have Chuck have to approve where it happens okay. because if you were to get to 75 feet you're on the hill up along the side of the house and it just wouldn't work so yeah yeah it seems know, reasonable like that and that you know, I'm pretty happy with that. okay um okay any other questions from the commission or yeah brian did you want that uh just i'm just wondering what you're talking about seems like we agonized over this, and this seems entirely too simple for all that time we yeah. spent. <laughs> well, I think the, the more you talk about it, just kind of pair it down. Yeah, so I think this is probably what we came up with. There might have been, we might have edited this, but this will work in, in We had some discussion about historic. We, it didn't make a lot of sense. We just said existing. I mean, yeah. that was the whole haggle. Yeah. I, think, I think we went over a lot of auctions, but then just came back to this. I, all right. I and and we got like very specific about which flags, yeah, flags we were, were going okay. to. An argument, too. I'm, I'm fine. That, that, it got to tricky. Give it a shot. No, I'm fine. This is fine. This is fine. Was. No, this is fine. Yeah, I mean, I think the flags are less relevant in this yeah. project because they're, yeah. they're all off property. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I think I th just referring to the two bounds. Yeah. No, this is this is fine. I think my mind was trying to sensationalize it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any other amendments or any other uh, the trumpet background proposed? Well, think, yeah, this has to be what. We did for me to write this down and we read it back. So yeah. We yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. did. I don't know how it has to be pretty close to what we've No, this on. is it. I'm yeah. just thinking, you know. Doesn't Reading have it, the, it doesn't seem like we argued over it. Doesn't have the bling. Doesn't have that Wall Street bling. Some of the best writing takes the most effort, so. <laughs> Not so. surprised. So. As long as you can understand it. No, it's very clear. Okay, motion to uh, approve the order of conditions as amended to modify, uh, to include the, uh, the sentence from 164 green and um, description of a flush mount bound and a raised stone bound. Okay, that's the motion I've made. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Uh, opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Brian, you have the copy that's going to get signed. So, so we may sign I ran it. out of. I ran so I should recycle this one. You can, yeah. Okay. Chuck, you don't need any text. Any. I'll work on that tomorrow, and okay. I'll. Okay. Send it to Tom. Make sure it's okay. Yeah. If you can. Okay. Okie doke. Page 11? Yeah. Page 11 or 10? What the hell? Oh. So I'm lost without you flipping through the pages and doing it the way you do it here. Like this. Page 11 or 10, yeah. <laughs> like, do it just like Chuck does it. Okay, where are we at? Okay, so that was... This one back again. Okay.
that way. Yep. Okay. Okay, minor project, 118, that's what we just did. So, uh, certificate of compliance for Oak Street. Oh, we didn't do that. Didn't we do that? Yeah, yeah we, we did. Did we do that? Yeah, did have to do that. Beginning. You're going to go out and look at the... Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. You're going to go and yep, look yep. at the town forest tomorrow it. and some oil. Yeah. Yep. Town forest. Okay. Oh, is it Pine? Pine, Pine Vale. Pine Vale. Pine Vale and... Uh, yeah. You're going to go to Pine Vale to not. Oak Street. Okay. Minutes. Um, any... Minutes. Yeah, minutes? how about minutes? Yeah. Any comments about the minutes from last time? I didn't have any problems with that. I'm fine with them. to approve the, min the minutes? I move we approve the minutes. Okay. I second that. All those in favor? Okay. Abstained. Abstained? Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, administrator's report. So my report um, this week is going to be on the town of uh, bylaw fees and uh, this is, you know, as activity of selling houses has uh, come up and they've, uh, whoever, the banks, the mortgage companies has increased the amount of paperwork they want um, to qualify a buyer, it actually rolls right down into the conservation office where we're doing uh, background research on projects from the 80s and from in the 70s too to find certificates of compliance and um, and to find uh, as built plans and then talk to the commission so there's a lot of work that's that's happening with these things and we've um, adopted a system of making an affidavit for um, to testify that a copy is a true statement and comes from this mm -hmm. office so I did notice on the fees that that um, and certificates of compliance have no fee associated with them. And I talked to Anika and asked her what she thought about um, having the commission look at the fees again. And maybe some of the fees that don't have, uh, you know, a dollar amount next to them, we could at least put something there. Uh, and I'll be willing to make a, um, you know, maybe a Excel graph of all the surrounding towns and do a survey of their fees and let everyone know what each town is paying around here, at least the ones that I can get back, uh, get back some information from so you can see where you are. I can tell you from the three towns I'm associated with, this is the lowest town that I've seen for um, request for determination fees, which we have for $75. And... Um, most towns that's about two hundred dollars worth of uh, application so and the notice of intents are usually around uh, three hundred to a thousand so In independent of, of the notice of intent fee from the state so you're saying it's a, the local bylaw fees right right in right. addition to yeah I, what's that what times are you talking so i work in boxford in the morning and i'm on the conservation commission in arlington so those are the three, this town, those towns. So so those are the ones I'll know all the time, no matter what. But um, in Arlington, we did just do a fee uh, review. So I know that Lex what Lexington, it doesn't associate with us, but Lexington, I know what they are, and Boxford, and I know what uh, Belmont. You reduce the fees in Arlington, right? We we haven't made a decision yet. It's a it's it's not as easy as well. I know I that know, you guys don't take any so, but it's it's not an easy process. You want to make sure that you're not overcharging, 
and uh, a lot goes into it. But you know, again, you know, to have a fee for a certificate of compliance where there's no fee for it, that that just never seemed right. And I don't even strange. think, and you're getting it at the front end either right, in this right, town. Right. So I mean, and that's what I'm thinking. Someone asked for a certificate of compliance from uh, a house in 1980. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of them do a, a dual fee on a situation like that. If you get your certificate of compliance within one year after the expiration of the permit, then it's this fee. But beyond that, it would be a different fee. I can tell you the federal government, if you, if you ask FEMA to produce a model for you, for, uh, for a, um, uh, a river analysis model, they have a research fee that you have to pay. It's not just look it up and here you go, it's free, it's already paid for by the taxpayers. You've got to pay them a research fee, it is a minimum fee, and then above and beyond a certain amount of time, they charge you more. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, even the federal government does it, so um, it seems we should have a fee for a service that's, you know, someone comes in and they need, you know, hey, I'm going to buy this house and I've got nothing to do with the, the certificate of compliance, you know, can I have the copy, can you research this for an hour and give it to me, you know? Right. And then, you know, no one likes to hear this, but they're not selling those houses for a dollar fifty. Nope. You know, they're going for big money, and so that fee's not, not really hurting anyone. So. Except for the person doing the research. <laughs> well, not having the fee, you know? It's not that everything should have a fee. Right. It's that, uh, you know, smarter people than me have determined in every town around us that a fee is associated with a certificate of compliance and an affidavit, and maybe some of our other fees need to be adjusted also. Mm -hmm. So that's what what I'm asking. I, I can make sense. I can do the work. I can bring in um, the material so you can compare towns around us. Mm -hmm. I think we should look into that. I think it's been asked of us to look into that, so we should respond to that and give it give an effort. So, um, and anybody who wants to chime in with anything they know professionally, feel free to email Chuck. Let him know as he yeah. What do the consultants feel? Is uh, I know Brian. Is pretty much a consultant, right? You're a consultant. Yeah, well, we're, we're, a lot of times we're fee exempt. Well, not from the local bylaws, but, but for the work that we do. Did the fees ever bother you? I'm not sure. No, because it's generally that. we don't pay them. So we, 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 either, we do work for municipalities or Mass DOT, and so it's. Uh, I was Rebecca? Consultant yeah. Now, but, um, developers certainly are going to pay the fee. I just. Just kind of sensitive to <laughs> the the uh, the small homeowner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You yeah. know. Um, so I. Oh, yeah. that's not, that's definitely something that can be brought up also. But yeah. I know when we did our fee review for the for the bylaw review, we did reduce some fees for the homeowners because we felt that that some of our fees were were a little too much on the homeowner side of things. That's right. Well, we we gave them a big break with our variance too. Right. But yeah. there's not. There's no consultant that's responsible for not having the order of conditions record well recorded and then coming back when you get your certificate of compliance. It's not also not the consultant's responsibility, although it can be, to have that certificate of compliance recorded. And that's what's happening. We have them in our files, but just a copy. Mm -hmm. you know, Twenty years later, there you know I get the an angry phone call saying what's why is this? I don't understand it. How could I have possibly bought the house? And, you know, this is, this, this still is hanging recorded. over it. We have a lot of instances where there are no certificates of compliance. And it's about 50-50 right yeah, now. because they didn't come back and finish their paperwork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's about 50-50. And I'm always happy when there's one in the file because it's a simple administrative right. action at this point where, you know, it's in there. I just do that affidavit and... We move forward with that. We've had instance. We had an instance some, some fairly recently where there was nothing. We had to go out and look at the house, and we had to say, "Is this in, in um, um, compliance with the order?" And the order was like 1987 or something. We're looking. I'm like, "Yeah, it looks like it." <laughs> I mean, how you get? You yeah. Know. Well, yeah, it gets tough. Sometimes you may need an as-built or an engineer to sign off, so you're not. Taking that I think that's what faith. we got in that case. We had the engineer just say, yeah, it's in substantially compliance with the plans. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I think sensitive uh, sensitivity to you know residents would be appropriate. Uh, you know, I'd, I'm not sure how that would work out because in a real estate transaction, um, you know, it's usually it's a real estate state transaction that triggers some of these and they usually need requests. It well, and, and it, 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 it's not going to work with a certificate of compliance <laughs> or the affidavits. Those are. I don't. I can make a million arguments where that's not gonna. We can't have a dual tier, uh, yeah. tiered, you know, fee right. system. Yeah, right. yeah it should but, just be fixed. But for the most part, it's going to be the small um, homeowner, you know, doing the RDAs. Yeah, that's for sure. But seventy-five dollars, yeah. still pretty. I mean, that's what the newspaper charges. Mm. Newspaper charges the same amount. Yeah. So that 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 could be. What a do job. we get for my project? Fifty. What's that? Minor project? What's the fee for the minor project? Yeah, it's $50. $50. So $50 seems appropriate because it's really, it's a site visit. Mm -hmm. How much would you charge for a site visit? And it's a little bit of paperwork, so it might be a little bit more than a site visit, but usually the site visit's going to be $50. But it's really no paperwork. Yeah, site visit's right. no paperwork, yeah. but a minor project you would... And again, a minor project, you're going to help them yeah. do the minor project. You're going to, there's a lot more, you know, direction. And then you have to um, send them a, uh, an approved minor project letter. You know, letter yeah. And then an RDA, you're probably helping them fill the form out for the RDA, which isn't, which isn't terrible, but yeah. RDA you're is, helping yeah. The, the homeowner. Okay, you know, you need this and you need to show this. And so there's more help involved there. It's it's true, but I don't I don't think you're going to get that back. But but still, it's I'm putting I might be putting two hundred and fifty dollars into an RDA, but we should raise our fees to something reasonable. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we're ever going to recoup yeah. right. what I put into those right. because it's it's really your opportunity. At least this is how I feel about it. It's my opportunity to show somebody from town that conservation, you know, isn't something that they can't work with. Right, you know, so right. help them fill out the form. Right, of course. Right. Get a plan form, all that. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we should should look at those again. Okay, it's it's my understanding that um, the assistant town manager has requested this review process, and that the results were to be sort of reported to the selectmen as well. So, um, we'll get going on that and. Uh, see where we're at at the next meeting I don't think it would I don't imagine it should take very long to put that together and get that done yeah, yeah I'll, have, I'll, I'll have something for the next meeting okay okay um, any other things no no can I bring something up please um, do we did um, go to 39 Gavin Circle 29 29 29 this is 39 Oh, we went to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom did, of the hill really? on the right? No, no, no we, you know where it was. The Vernal oh, yeah. 29. The Vernal Pool 29. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. We definitely went there. Uh, yeah, you know the, yeah, you know the place. Go ahead. I know that place right. Uh, just want to, I, I, I don't know, I just want to give you guys a head, heads yep. up that uh, it looked good. The uh, grass was growing in, and uh, but they were pretty upset and i they did mention they were going to sue the town i just thought i'd bring that up well they mentioned that mm -hmm. oh they mentioned that a couple times i, I don't i don't doubt that uh, so i you know it's, i just it's yeah. it's the tail end of, of, yeah. a, of a very they probably um, realize all the costs for us before they did it so yeah i tried to paint being shocked so are they going to wait until they get their uh till we release them from the enforcement order Maybe. Uh, they don't know. I know they're going ahead now. Indicated to us. A question. <laughs> was that, that was a certified vernal pool, right? Yes. It is a certified vernal pool. But, but on, on the it map, is. it's mm -hmm. not where it is. It's off. It's look, not shown it's by so our. It's vaguely put in there. It's like a hundred. Well, that could by be our right. town GIS system We're appropriate. The back, the accurately. Neighbor's backyard instead of where in that side there, but. But all the neighbors knew it was a pool too. Yeah. Uh, was it incumbent on the uh, town engineer who were, who or representative of the town engineering department to have looked at those maps? Um. 
what do you think do? Yeah, so look, looked at what maps? The, the map that, any map that would have shown that as a certified vernal pool. Instead of just a sewer line, which is what they have. Right. The water line. Uh, right. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. That's a question for that individual. I, you know, or are they, are I, we have we have a standard GIS program. They have more maps down downstairs. He has the ability to look through everything, but I'm not sure he's trained to say, "Oh, that red dot means certain, you know certified vernal." Do pool. our maps show vernal pools? No, you, you have to look for them. I mean, if, we're, if you want to make sure, like you're going to go to Oliver or yeah, maps GIS. I think this is an educational problem that the, the town, but also the real people should be better educated. And knowing ahead of time that it's there, so it could be you know, it, it, it for the real kind of is it incumbent on the person who's buying the house. I would. Well, that's why I think the realtor is buying it. If you know, the, what what I, I spoke to a realtor um, about uh, wetlands knowledge, just just that general topic, and and I asked her. She was she's an experienced seller in town, and her understanding of real estate transactions. She explained to me and from that perspective that um, it is buyer beware, that, that the seller does not have to disclose right. everything. But then the um, buyer should do more research. And, and I think, um, you know, I've heard um, from that resident that they did come to town hall, and this is, you know, where they were coming from, that they did come to town hall, that they spoke to engineering, and that... Um, according, you know, according to what transpired, they didn't get, they got what they thought was the green light from engineering. Um, and so therefore they proceeded, um, as they saw fit. Um, there's a, there's, uh, there were residents who showed up at the beginning of those hearings who said, uh, as they were about to start. Uh, residents who stood up and testified here, you know, take that for what it's, you know, worth, um, that they told this neighbor um, that they were that they weren't allowed to cut anything there because there's a vernal pool there. So there was, you know, who knew what when? We don't have all the knowledge. We don't have all the data. Um, unfortunately, yeah, sign unfortunately, there was a violation before. Yeah, before their trees were cut, the arborist yeah, said. said you he sign had this. them sign my release that uh, that this is not wetlands, they and he signed this. it. Who, yeah. who signed it? The resident supposedly that, that he signed the and arborist, the, and that he was uh, told. The resident investigated, and yeah, he was it. told it was clear, and he signed the release for the arborist, and and, now, and that the, the resident knew enough to, to so, make him sign the release. So there's a lot of there's a lot of story and test, you know, and and insisting um, that somebody knew something at some point and wasn't told and you know I I'm not we we've just been um, dealing with the violation of the massive tree cutting um, we've just been trying to get through that with them um, and they've clearly been unhappy about the situation yeah so I'm not I'm not too surprised well, they had said um, that the town engineer said you'd be doing the town a favor if you clear this and that's their side, but yeah, I don't know. It's you know because of, the easement, <laughs> because of the easement, because of the <laughs> easement, and and maintaining plants on that easement. So it's been, it's been. That, that's um, what they. That's what they said at the hearing. Yeah. 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 So I heard from um, the engineer, though. well, it's too bad that that um, the Fistalas got have you know expressed their anger. I thought that this was really resolved, and they got the best they could do with the situation. And I know we compromised a lot. And I was really, yeah, I'm surprised to hear that because every time I've gone out there, it was rough in the beginning, but at towards the end, it, you know, they, seemed like we had a cooperative they agreement. Have, you know, they, they, they feel wouldn't feel have what they have now <laughs> if it wasn't for, yeah, you know, right. the commission just kind of. They, they feel burned helpful. and I think a bit betrayed, and and I think one of the things is that, that the uh, they feel that their neighbors aren't like have turned on them yeah. so how do we repair that damage <laughs> you know well, we you can't. don't we and, can't. and but but they're they're stinging about this and and they said um, you know if if we got the money back recoup the money that we spent we'd be fine it's like whatever <laughs> <laughs> I s I'm glad I don't have to make that decision yeah well. <laughs>
So now we have the first existing culturally maintained vernal pool. It's all formed around it now. It's a designed vernal pool. Because, oh, it, the, because the impacts of the cutting, that, that vernal pool is not going to Did be restored to its previous condition for tens but, of but years. But the vegetation looks really healthy out there. So yeah. it did, and I, I did notice with that uh, one of the things we wanted them to do um, was they, they didn't actually have to plant too much inside the, the erosion control because it all came back. I mean, the seed bank was just mm -hmm. great in there. But they do have to monitor it for That's invasives. Amazing. And there was like, how they did that, they did the lawn, and it was supposed to only have a couple of inches of topsoil on it, but I think right at the, right at the silt fence, it drops right down. I don't... I don't know that did, I haven't been out there, hmm. but from the street it looks like it's six plus inches. So there's this big berm of dirt, did you which is probably good uh, in a way. We kind of went out on the side though, we, along we, that retaining wall. Yeah, we didn't come. So we, we didn't come there. that way. We went along the side mm. yeah. Yeah. where that <coughs> retaining wall is, and it's kind of cracked. Yeah. So I think to, to say, hey, beyond that fence is wetland and stay off, and on this side it's going to be grass, I think that's, that was achieved. So. Yeah. 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 So. It's going to um, be. We, we, we know that they have not been pleased with the situation they've been in. So um, that, unfortunately, is, is not a new message to receive from people who, <laughs> who come in. Uh, come before us so can't say much more about that but I think the best thing to say about that situation is at least it doesn't come into our room you know it's it's if they're gonna sue the town that's yeah, someone else has to deal with that yeah right so um, so anyway um, any other any other business I don't I just have a question Go ahead. I, I'm not gonna be here in the next meeting and okay um, it's been on the agenda like a thousand times the the elections yes and I was do like if you guys wanted to do that next time could I proxy a vote or could I just abstain or that way it just gets done I don't know if you guys well, know. I was going to entertain guys. the vote tonight yeah if, so if I wasn't anybody sure, else yeah I just but I'd like to know if anybody else is interested I mean I don't really know how it works good. you so. can keep it open Tom you can keep yeah. it open thank you oh we, we could do it tonight I mean I just wasn't sure if everybody had to yeah, be here okay. because we're never all here, so that's why Thanks. I was. I don't know. I, we just have to have a quorum. I, yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. Um, do you, if if you guys would rather, you know, keep delaying it until, um, you know, we could do one of two things. We could keep it with the quorum we've got um, tonight, or we could wait until there's. Full attendance, Jamie which I might be I next know, I mean, year. <laughs> I, don't I, know. Well, I don't know when it's, it's like, going to happen. But I, think I mean, because Jamie's then yeah, Terry. Terry's gone, and Is you know, Terry I, gone? I don't know. So I think, I think um, Jamie's got some I think concerns wants, with yeah. the process. He's the one with the concerns with the process. I mean, I don't, I don't know about anybody else, but I know that he has verbalized that he has concerns with what's how the. But I think that has to do with the history, and um, and and that isn't necessarily. Um, existing policy. No, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, if we voted on it now with him not here, knowing that he has those concerns, I mean, maybe the concerns will never be allayed. But yeah, uh, it, it, that that would that would. But you see what I'm saying? He would be might, left out of that I discussion. So. And we also have Chuck's suggestion that we have more continuity because this working group, the group that chairman, is easier. Maybe you would ask that maybe we don't keep changing as often. So that's something oh, we should think and, about. Thank I'm you. just saying that because Jamie's absent. But is that the same? Is that the same thing? So, not to interrupt you, but I want to say, is saying he's up, he's upset with the process the same thing as, hey, we have to wait for him to vote? It's up to you guys. But I think that he can say that, who no matter who the chair is, and maybe he should. Right. And then the second thing I wanted to tell you is I actually um, contacted the town manager. Mm -hmm. And said, what, what's going on with this? Every chair, the chair has to turn over once a year, um, and that's been asked or suggested. And um, so he said, well, I don't, I don't think they have a right to say that. And um, he checked his minutes, and they, he came back to me and said, um, there, and I have the email that there's, um, there's nothing in the minutes, and so do whatever you want. I mean, I think we're, I think we're. At least I'm clear because it's been said by Jamie that he believes that the chair should rotate, and I think that's his belief. So I mean, this, 
That's one person. -ish. Right. I'm, I'm not opposed to that sentiment. I don't think somebody should be chair for a decade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's healthy. I think five years they probably shoot themselves in the head. But. Um, I guess what I'm saying is in his absence, we know how he feels. So. Okay. Right. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> the chairs are often, they often are there forever. I mean, right. I don't, right. I don't know other than the selectmen if it changes once a year. So I think, I think we've determined that it, it, that's, we don't have to do that. And I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but um, I think that a con continuity that we, we've discussed actually, a continuity in the chair for, for a short time is at least better. And like you said, you know, you just get to know someone, and, you know, you work with them a couple months, you get to know them, and then next thing you know, you're getting a new one, you know, and, and, and at least that's your experience. Um, I think it makes sense to have some sort of continuity for some period of time. Yeah, I often don't see chairs changing every year. Yeah. No. No, I, I think... Uh, I, I think the idea of changing them at some point is good, but, but yeah, more, I agree. more than a year, I think, is reasonable. What, what we're trying to do here in town is, um, well, you know, really speaking for Nika, but I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to come part time. We've talked about it. So when the DP, so we're going to do this presentation of the DPW department. All right, and we've talked about that, and we're going to let the commission see what we're what we're doing here. But it's just so they don't mow down any wetlands. So, our, the point is, if I'm not here, call the chair. Or call the office. Do one of the one or the other, but don't just do it and um, don't call anyone or say I'm not going to make a phone call because this can't get resolved. So by having some continuity in that position and everyone knows who to call and how it's going to be handled, it, it seems <coughs> to me that that is a positive positive thing. And it hasn't happened with with I'm not just going to say the DPW with homeowners too, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. So I, I mean, if we're not going to change chairs, we don't have to do anything. She's already here. <laughs> we just but I, I, I think that she uh, she took the position as a one year position, and, and if you guys want to make a, I think a vote is needed, you but you might right. change the policy after right. that. Right, right, right. Something, right. something like that. I mean, you can. I, I feel that the chair should be longer than a year, maybe even up to three years. Three, maybe the chair should coincide with your your term. You know, I, I, terms I should point out that. The Trails Committee Chairman is probably, I don't know how long time has been there, about five or six years he's been right. Chairman. Mm -hmm. And I've been Chairman of the Forest Committee for almost two years. And I think the continuity is really good. Yeah, it is. you know it is. if something goes on, you know who to call right Right, so right. I think it is, and it is get, helpful. And like you that. get a sense of the inner workings and how yeah. and, and where you can make progress. In the last meeting I was out with, 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 with the, the town selectmen, they were talking about there's this increased mutual cooperation between right. all the different groups right. and how mm -hmm. right. it was growing, and mm -hmm. I can see that coming along. But mm -hmm. if you don't have the continuity, it's hard to keep that going. Yeah, so do we even want to have a limit here at the, at the Conservation Commission as a, as a, as a policy? Uh, or, or do we want to just... You're, you're asking so you me. Well, I'm just saying, I'm saying the commission. The commission. Um, I think that Jamie is definitely going to need to have a limit. There's no way he's just going to let it go. He's like very adamant about that that one time when it went like way too far. Yeah. So there's no way he's just going to let it fly if there's no limit at all and be like the person just. Gonna, I, just <laughs> I think. Right. Yeah. I think five's too long. Five's one's too, too short. Long. Two or three is good. <laughs> two or three. Uh, is there any other yeah, sense of anybody else what uh, time limit should be? I think the chair should have um, some sort of holiday party also in conjunction with their appointment. Whoever is on that responsibility. It's the last meeting of uh, the year. We'll just we'll have a little, you know, especially if we finish her at like eight. We'll, we'll have, have a holiday party at their appointment. We'll all head over to Grumpy Doyle's while we're after party. Pop the champagne. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. something. Um, no, I, I mean, for... I, admittedly, I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, it was pretty clear I was probably trying to dodge being voted chair in the first place. But you know, now once once I um, realized how much fun it was. Realized how much fun it was. Exactly. <laughs> no, I, I think a year is too short. I think a year is too short. Because you've gone over a year already. Yeah. yeah. We're all gone over. Yeah. 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 Almost, yeah. almost a year and so, a half. Maybe we got to so, go to three then. Just to right show now, three years to learn sounds all that too long. Stuff. But you know, yeah. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> it could still. That could change in my mind. So, 
Um, I just I just would be happy to get it off the agenda. <laughs> it's been on there since I started. It's been on basically. there for like the last four five meetings, and uh, that's my preference. But we don't have to. I'm not going to push that through or anything. So, would you guys like to vote for a chair? <laughs> Well, let's, vice let's, chair. Do, do we first want to vote? vote? See I think if we, we want to first vote. talk about do we want to extend do, the term limit? Do we want to extend the term limit or just abandon our current policy and work on a new one, or do we want to alter our, our current policy? And, uh, I, I would, What's I would propose feeling? that we set up um, an understood policy limit of at least two years. As yeah, chair, and then we don't have to limit that's open ended, though. at yeah. least two but, years. But okay. That's open ended. Yeah. Okay, that, right. That could mean ten. So then, you want to uh, say that? but but the way the sentiment's going now, I think yeah. we're keeping yeah. ourselves in right. check, and right. I don't think yeah. it's going to be, you know. So then, shall I, so if it becomes an issue, then we can do it. If it becomes an issue, yeah. So then I move that we change our, we alter our current policy that we that we've but decided we, on. We have a policy. <laughs> we have a policy, right? We I don't think we have an existing policy. I think that's what. Well, the in town Boston, manager what ends up saying. happening is I don't think they have a, um, an official policy, but. I think once a year they just do it. approve the chairman for yeah. the following year. Yeah. And I think that's just what they do. Yeah. Okay. So, they ask him if so, they, so let's say Jamie has, you know, he, he does, he says, look, I, I don't want, I want a new election. And it would just be who, who wants to second that? If anyone does, then, then, then it happens. If no one wants to do that, then they'll just have an election right there and then and maybe I appoint see. the same, same old people. So, not that, you're old, so we can't. <laughs> so then we, we don't we don't make a so then we don't make a motion that Anika remains chair and <laughs> for the next two years for the next no, or not the next two years but at least you know. I just think when there's when there's when there's someone when there's some reason to take them out there'll be enough people that would say right. yeah let's right yes. right yeah. right right. Also, we could say let's just do one more year and then in that time period, if we want to come up with something more formal, we could vote uh, on that too. But I think it sounds like the consensus is that that we're not going to, you know, we don't want to rotate the chair right now. That's what I And feel it can like. go as long as, as, yeah. as it does. Right. And each year you would ask, but is that going to be in June? Why don't we revisit that? Um, June yeah. will be two years. Yeah, I don't know when my term's up officially. Well, it's supposed to be like June, my, but, yeah. But you know, whether it's next year like too, or right? 2016, did. when did I re- I think Jamie went to the end of Renew. the year. We'll call our office. I could call. I'll call. I'll call. So why don't we say till June of next year yeah. for now? I think. Yeah. But because I also, we've got to get through well, no, whatever's going to happen. You're, so each June you'll discuss who's going, right. you right. know, if you're satisfied right. with the chair. It's not that your term ends. But, but right. I, also, I also think we should have a discussion at some point to say, do we want to leave it like that or do we want to set two or three years? Yeah. Right. And, and just make sure that we formalize it one other way because you could have this, you know, once you're in power, you never get out of power. Yeah, the there's a lot of benefits. This. Yeah, yeah. But just, it, it, at this, this point, people <laughs> just sticking Cover around for those, those perks. Like this. <laughs> but at this, but at this point, it's I think coveted position. Um, <laughs> I think we've decided that we don't need to have an election that you know the chair will remain the same. Because we never had any formal cutoff date. Yeah, apparently we never did. So there's no re. We weren't in violation of anything as of July 1st because right. it's never been the policy. Is that correct, Chuck? That's right. I, I don't know about the. Jamie seemed to have a lot of information on the policy, <laughs> but the, but Bob LaShore said that, that not only did he think that that wouldn't be proper, but <coughs> that he said there was nothing in the um, minutes. I think that may have just been the tradition of the commission. Like I said, Based both the Forest knowledge. Committee and the Charles okay. Committee don't seem to have any time limit to it. They just say, Chairman. All right. Well, let's, uh, after that thorough discussion, why don't we take it off the agenda? Okay. Um, we'll put it back on. Uh, are you going to be officially, year. so. You are officially the chair. Well, without, without hearing any objection or and, and request for a I will revote, continue. I'm going to uh, usurp my power and say I'm still chair. <laughs> Excellent. Can, can we do this so we can get rid of the vice chair? But keep <laughs> I think the vice chair should come over to all of our houses and help us on some sort of handy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there any other business for tonight? I have an issue. Um, Go ahead. The Ipswich River Water Set Association wants to put a kiosk down by the river in the town forest. 
It's some. They, um, they have some money they got from the suits and damage, and they want to spend nine hundred and so dollars, and they want to build this nice kiosk, which is going to show the watershed and the importance of the water, but also the importance of the land around it and how cool. affecting that affects the water. I think that's very good. And yeah. then the trails, the forest cool. committee is also going to add another eighty dollars so they can purchase a double site, oh, and uh, they'll put all the information up about the town forest and rules and things like cool. that, or what to do with dogs. Will it be in the no-build zone? Well, that's what I wanted to ask, because <laughs> where it is now, there's kind of a little dead end. It's almost like a landing that goes out, and lots of dogs go there. And, mm -hmm. and it's a very popular area, and they want to put it as close to the water as possible. It because probably should be, yeah. But I want to know how far out, because we can go and mark it on the map, and say it's going to be 75 feet out. How far do you want it from the river edge? We have a, I don't know. I, I would say, I would say that you would want it at least thirty for for usage. You'd want it at least ten feet away from mean annual high water. Well, right now where we think it's a nice area because it's almost like where two trails come together is about fifty feet, sixty feet. Oh well, there you so go. I just want to sure that was okay. Oh, fifty feet. Uh, feet that, sounds. But that's from that's from the river. But then there's wetlands that comes up along the side there, so it wouldn't be. I'm just thinking you get too far away. Thirty and you're feet. Like, you know. I would say it's probably thirty feet from the wetlands and sixty feet from the river. But we're talking about what digging two holes and two poles. I want to go out there and, and drop some uh, some some hay bales on top of those so it doesn't freeze over. So that when we go out there, it oh, may, right, right, it may right, be late right, November, right, December, right, we can get right. out there. Um, yeah. So why don't you why don't you mark it out and we'll I'll put it on, put it on a map on like the one with the and, and I'll say mark it this one. You know, I'm gonna go. And we're not talking about doing it for about a month anyway, so. Okay. I think it's maybe December 5th before we get the kiosk. Did you um, see what the uh, the kiosk is gonna look like? Did you? Yeah. Is it kind of similar to what you have in other spots? It's similar, it has these um, sliding plexiglass, so it protects what you have in behind mm -hmm. it. And there's a yeah. little little lock on it, which probably won't last too long. <laughs> right. There's a lot of the other kiosks, the small kiosks, get destroyed out there. Mm -hmm. You put everything up and it gets ripped down, so. What's it? Okay. It's more secure. Is it made out of wood or is it made out of the it's tracks? Wood. It's wood. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice. Those things are. And once they, so once they give us this kiosk, is it? Can we put things on it also? Can we well, use it? Well, on the other side mm -hmm. is going to be town forest. We have we'll have control of that. Okay. And, and we'll put up things like the new rules and regulations of the town forest, or warnings about bacteria and you know, the algae growth in some of those ponds for the dogs. Mm -hmm. Just different messages like that will be up there. Coyote. Coyotes. Yeah, that's another big yeah. issue there. Oh, good. We got one side. I think that's great. Yeah. But we're also talking about um, taking the rules and regulations and blowing them up and pl plasticizing them and putting them in about a dozen places around. Um, that sounds great. And I, I think those educational kiosks are really helpful for yes. people who walk around there. And, you know, everybody wants to sort of find out where they are and what, what it's about. Yep. Um, anything else, great. Ty? No, that's it. Okay. Um, I, just, I just wanted to follow up. Um, I was pursuing the, the next, um, I was questioning the billing department here in town about the Pearl Street water and sewer. Oh, yeah. uh, stormwater fee. I just, just as follow up, I haven't heard anything back. So if I hear anything, good follow up. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> if I hear anything, I'll pass it just along. Tell we're, we're paying the stormwater fee for a vacant lot. Yeah, it, it's to the, the tune of about sixteen dollars a quarter, but it's, a curb it's cut just or something this like that. ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, is that required? We, you know, because we're not making see. money off that yeah. property. You know. <laughs> Tell that's we, that's we just in, coming out of the town money to pay town money. We encourage recharge. We and, and we do. It's like paying area. for our own, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for our own benefit. Maybe we'll do less of that. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Um, anything else? Nope. Nope. That's about it. Okay. A motion to. Uh, I'm to close. To dismiss. All right. Second? I'll second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Meeting closed. Adjourned.